series, the name of this series is called Can Your Faith Move Mountains? According to the scriptures, Jesus said your faith can move mountains. The mountains that's in your life, your faith can move those mountains. And uh, one of my favorite stories in the scripture is the stories of uh, Zacharias and Elizabeth. I hope you know it. If you don't, it's, a, it's a, one of the Christmas stories. And uh, in this book, Zacharias, he's a priest or a preacher. But his, his, his goal was kind of like, you know, a little bit like Catholicism. And the priest, they would go and they'd go serve. And they had their time where they would serve the temple. But Zacharias was standing in the temple. Uh, his wife Elizabeth, they, they, were, they were barren. They could not have kids. And so an angel of the Lord appeared to them. Kaboom. Can you imagine just like we're sitting here now and the angel showed up. Just, I mean, he's working, serving the church, the temple. And the Bible said an angel showed up. Not just any angel, but Gabriel, God's personal messenger. The Bible says that Gabriel's, Gabriel said to him, I stand in the presence of God showed up, said to Zacharias, the first thing he says to Zacharias, he says, Zacharias, fear not. It's the first thing he said. Don't be afraid, right? Six months later, or maybe even a couple months later, the same angel showed up to, to Mary. She was working, doing her little thing, and the angel whoosh, appears, says Mary. You know, he gave her, a, a, he saluted her with the, some words, and then he said, fear not. Don't be afraid. Now, question, why do you think the angel told him not to fear? That's a good question, isn't it? Why would he? Because remember now, we talk about we have two systems that, we're, we're op that operate in this world, right? They're both spiritual systems. One is fear. One is faith. Based on fear, the culture is fear. The, uh, this other kingdom, God's kingdom, the culture is faith. Yes? Y'all remember that? Just pretend like you do if you don't. Amen. Praise the man. Come on. This is an AP class. Praise the Lord. All right? So, so listen. Uh, and so, so why do you think the angel says to Mary and to Zacharias, don't be afraid. Don't you be afraid. You know why? Here's why. I'm going to tell you why. This is what I wrote in my notes. Because you cannot receive a message from God in the state of fear. You can't. No. Because fear will not allow you to believe. Fear won't allow you to have faith. Let me say it again. Fear will not allow you to have faith. Y'all hear me? So it wouldn't allow. So, so, so you got to understand something. There's always a battle between fear and faith. These two cultures are always battling. Listen to the news if you don't believe me. Now think about it. The goodness of God is all around us. We see it all around us. We experience it. We just forget. We become numb to it. We see the trees blowing. We see the birds being fed. We see the sun not burning us up. We're alive. We're breathing. We're doing well. All these things, right? Yes. But we, we, we more attuned to this because there's a there's a battle between the two cultures, <sighs> right? So here's the issue for us as Christians: we can walk by faith and still have fear thoughts and keep walking. I'll say it again. As Christians, we can walk by faith and have fear thoughts and still keep walking. Because we have to know. We have to know that there's a battle between these two. And for us, the issue is, who are you giving control to? Which culture are you more inclined to? A culture that operates by faith in God's way or a culture that operates in fear? What are you more inclined to? <sighs> I thought I was preaching real good, but y'all kind of got quiet on now listen, if, if fear is in control, listen to this carefully, is fear, if the culture of fear is in control of your life, everything seems impossible. Right. How's that going to happen? That's what, that's what got Zacharias. See, can I go back to Zacharias? That's what got Zacharias in trouble. Zacharias said to the angel, because well, here's what the angel did. The angel came, told Zacharias, hey, Zacharias, hey, you know, God has a plan. And it, he, it's, you're included. And here's what's going to happen. You're going to have a son. And, and, you did, and, and, and your wife, Elizabeth, she's going to have a son. And here's what you need. This is the way you need to train him. This is the way he needs to live. All those things, right? Zachariah said, how's that going to happen? I'm old. Listen, you see, you see how fear has started to dominate his thoughts? So what did the angel do? Listen, y'all, carefully. The angel closed his mouth. Why did he close his mouth? Why didn't he just, why didn't he blind him? 
Why didn't he make him deaf so he couldn't hear? Because the only thing that could change or even, listen, hinder the plan of God for your life is the words coming out of your mouth. Y'all hear me? So that's why the angel said, uh, 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 uh. see, listen, I, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. You're going to mess this up. So let me just close your mouth. <sighs> Mary, on the other hand, the angel came to Mary. He declared some things. That, You're a great woman of God, and here's what's going to happen. What did Mary say? Be it unto me, just like you said. <laughs> oh, my God. That's a, no, she said, she, listen, she, 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 somebody, somebody raised her right. She's on the, she got it the first time. What? Be it unto me. Be it unto me, like you said. Right? Zacharias, uh, uh. <laughs> so listen, what, things we have to understand is this. Listen, it's very, clear, very, uh, very carefully listen. Zacharias and Lizzie, I call her Lizzie Elizabeth. In order, for their, in order for the plan of God, listen to me carefully. In order for the plan of God to take place in their lives, they needed to operate by faith. In order for the plan to take place, they had to learn how to operate by faith. Okay? So that's why he closed his, my man's, uh, Zachariah's mouth. Because he would, fear would have messed it all up. Right. Just like fear would mess up your life. If you subscribe to it. If you use the words that fear produces. It'll, it'll throttle your life. It'll stop it. That's why the angel said, oh, you be quiet. Mary, on the other hand, as I said, Mary spoke the words of faith. So what we have to understand is that just like Elizabeth and Zacharias and Mary, God has a plan for your life. And uh, I'm going to tell you today, I'm going to show you something the scripture is going to blow you away about God's plan for your life. He has a specific plan for your life. The issue is, will you work with him or work against him? Based on how you've been impacted on these two different cultures, Faith says, God, I believe it. I'm going to stand with it. I'm going to go with it. Other, other fear says, okay, I hear it, but man, I don't know how that's going to happen. Be, can you imagine Norval and what's his name? Wilbur, right? God telling them, build an airplane. Can you imagine them saying, really? Man, that, that, that can't happen. But something, the spirit of God, I know, Influence them to the degree that they could believe beyond what they can see. Oh, man. I'm trying hard, man. I'm trying hard. Y'all got me sweating already. No, because listen, here's the thing, and this is what we're going to talk about today. God has a plan for your life, right? But all of us need guidance in order for that plan to take place. All of us need guidance for that plan to take place. Let me give you an example. I was, uh, I was 18 years old. You know, I told you my mom died when I was 16. And I was confused, man. I was a confused kid. I started using drugs. I told you about the time I took a drug in one of my classes. It was stupid. I took a pill. Took a pill and just, I, I think I passed out, but I, I think I was asleep. I don't know what I was. I wasn't present. I know that. And when I woke up, the bell rang and everybody was laughing at me. I slobbered all on my mouth. And, and I woke up and I said, what did I just do? I took, somebody gave me a pill. I took it like an idiot. God. See how good this God, good God is? So I, and I promised God that day, I said, if you bless me, I'll never again do that again. Because I was not there. Right? So let me tell you. So anyway, so I decided I was not going to play football in college, even though I had opportunities. I was mad at God. I was mad at the world. Things didn't go the way they were supposed to. So I decided I'm going to go in the military. I'm just going to go in the military. I was going to go in the army first because I had a recruiter coming to the house. He was aggressive. Matter of fact, he was so aggressive, he came to my house all the time, right, that he ended up marrying my cousin who was living with us. Wow. They're married right now. Been married for 30-something years. <laughs> True story. They're married right now. And uh, <laughs> somebody said, he wasn't coming for you. Yeah, he was. <laughs> the first two times, at least, the first two times he was there for me. <laughs> but they're still married. They got two wonderful boys. They're very successful. They live out somewhere out here in Duluth somewhere, doing really well in ministry, uh, ministry in uh, business and all. But uh, listen, I was lost. I didn't know if to go in the Army, but the Air Force appealed to me. Army was making me a bunch of promises. Air Force said, oh, no, nah, this is the way you want to go. So I, so I went, I had an uncle named Uncle Henry Polite. And Uncle Henry, you know, he, had a, he smoked the, the Moors. Y'all know those Moors cigarettes, those pretty cigarettes. You know, you know. Anyway, never mind. But 
he, sm he smoked those like 100 a day. I mean, he just smoked so much. And I, and I used to always go to his house, and he would be reading the paper. And I said, Unc, Unc, I said, I got to talk to you. I said, what, what's, what's going on, Dal? I said, uh, I, said I want to go in the military, but I'm conf I don't know which one to go into. I'm I need some guidance. He said, where do you think about going? I said, the Air Force or the Army? He put his paper down and looked at me and said, oh, no, that's not a, that's not a, you need, oh, Air Force, son, you don't go in that Army. Now, all you Army people, just forgive us. But I did, listen, I ended up going into the Air Force. Now, listen, going into the Air Force, meeting a couple who was a chaplain couple. They was preached to me the gospel, di discipled me, showed me how, how to live, how to be a good husband, all those things. How did that happen? It was the hand of God guiding me. You see what I'm saying? So for us, what we have to understand that it takes faith for you to know what God's will is for your life. Because without your faith, it won't come to pass. And I'm going to show you how specific God is when he, when he designed you and designed your life. It was not an accident. None of us are. Oh, my God. Lord, help me. So let's talk about what's faith. We, we talked about this for the last four weeks. What is faith? Y'all still here? Faith is the ability to believe something and then act on what you believe regardless of the obstacles that are present. That's faith. Okay? That's what faith is. It's acting on what you believe, regardless of what's there, all the no's and the can'ts and all the, and the buts, all that. Faith says, I believe and I can do it, so I get up and I do something. If you don't do something, it's not faith. Y'all hear me? You need an action plan in order for it to be faith. So when it comes to your life and God's plan for your life, you need faith. Or the plan for God's plan for your life will not take place. That's why when we come to judgment day, listen, he'll say to some, well done, good and faithful service. What is he saying well done to? The plan for your life. That's what he's saying well done to. All right, so let's talk. Can we just have a conversation? What do you know about God's plan for your life? What do you know? Most people don't know. We don't know. I didn't know. No plan. Nobody talked to me about that. They told me to come to church and shout. Sweat. <laughs> anyway, I ain't got time. Y'all leave my people alone. Y'all leave my people alone. All right. <laughs> what do you know? First of all, number one, listen. Like faith, right? We say faith. God ha everybody has faith, yes? Everybody has faith. Somebody say that. Everybody has faith. Okay, because you work on your job. You work two weeks. You ain't got no paycheck, but you work. At the end of two weeks, you start. You don't even look at your account. You start swiping. Swoop, swoop, swoop. <laughs> That's faith. That's faith. Faith ain't a Christian. It's, 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 it's what God gives everybody. But that's just the Christian way. No, it's not. Everybody got faith. So just like faith, all right, like faith, your life needs directions and decisions are universal. Okay? Direction and decisions are universal. It doesn't matter who you are, what culture you come from, what genre Everybody seeks clarity about directions for life. Everybody. Everybody wants to know, what's God's plan for my life? Why am I here? If you don't, know, if you don't want to know that, something wrong. We need to have a conversation. Because we all have thought this. God, what's your plan? What am I doing here? How did I get here? <sighs> Either somebody lying or y'all just don't want to say amen or something. All right, y'all got it? So just like faith, we all need directions. We all need decisions. We have to make decisions. Come on, next point. What do we know about God's plan for our life? Listen, God doesn't hide his plan for your life. That would be real petty, wouldn't it? To create me for a reason and then hide it. No, no, no. He knows we'll need help discovering his plan. That's why he sent his, the Spirit of God to help us. We'll talk about that in a second. But he knows you're going to need some help. He don't hide his plan. That would be so petty. Let me hide it from you so you'll never know. Hide and seek. Follow me. No. Listen, you're not going to use your faith on something you can't find. You're not going to use it. So he has to. He has to help us. And I'm going to show you throughout the scriptures how all along he helped the people that he had created for reason like he did us. All right? So next point, listen. 
The main thing is about our plan with God. The main thing is this. Let me say this before I go. Is that God wants you to join him. You fulfilling God's plan for your life is you joining God in what he's doing in your generation. Because, you, you know, we're going to live, hopefully we live to get that 120 we talked about last week. Right? Uh, uh, but, but, if, but your life means simply you're joining God in what God is doing. He's doing something. I knew in my life, I knew, I knew. I didn't know the, the specifics like I know now, but I knew God was up to something in my life. I knew it at fourth grade. When I was outside playing basketball, because see, we didn't have a, we didn't have a rim, you know, mom and them. We, so we took an old tire of a, um, the rim of a, a tire of a, a bicycle, took the spokes out and put the rim up, put a nail in it. Shoo. You couldn't, you couldn't hit the rim, so you had to be, a, had to be a good shooter. You know what I'm saying, like Steph Curry. You mean just, shoo, right? And so while I'm out there, shoo, ain't no nets. It's just you don't even know if it went in or not. You just kind of just, <laughs> and listen, I'm out fourth grade. And God says to me, I want to use your life. Fourth grade. I heard him. I knew it was him. And he said, you're going to preach. So every time we go play with my cousins, guess who was the preacher? We need a preacher. We play church. You know, yo, we, we were churchy people, y'all. Y'all forget what we church. We play church. Guess who? Darren, you be the preacher. All right, I'm on, I was the preacher. You see it? How God just guides us and he lets us know. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to help you in a minute. All right, come on, next point. Listen, he just wants us to join him. But listen, next point is God the Holy Spirit is your guide to knowing the Father's will for your life. The Spirit of God, listen to this. This is John, the 16th chapter, 12th verse. He says, listen, this is Jesus praying for the disciples. He says, there is so much more I want to tell you. Now, he was about to go to, to the cross, right? And then he was telling him, after the cross, I'm going to heaven. I ain't going to see y'all no more. But listen, he said, there's so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. In other words, you can't handle it. Y- y'all know how you want to, Lord, just tell me what to do. Please just tell me. And no, 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 you can't handle it. Right. Stay right where you are because you can't handle it. Oh, man. When the spirit of truth comes, he will do what? Guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. And he will tell you about the future. You see that? He'll tell you about the future when you're ready. But, the, but verse 13 says, but the spirit of, spirit of truth will come. He will guide you. So we need a guide in order to find what God's plan is for our life. And it's the spirit of God who lives on the inside of you. He, he's your guide to help you discover the will of God for your life or the plan of God for your life. But as we said before, you have to use your faith in order for it to be completed. If you don't use your faith, you're not going to complete it. <sighs> Waymaker. So how do we use our faith to receive guidance from God, Pastor Darren? Well, let's just talk. How do we do it? Our first point, listen. Y'all see it in the notes? Now, we're going to be phasing them notes out. Uh, after next week, we're going to start making, you know, we're going to uh, lessen the amount we, use, we, we, we print. Because we want everybody to start using Nucleus. We, we pay for nucleus every month. I just want y'all to know that. <laughs> so we, <laughs> we, we have to use it, all right? All right, so number one, listen. Know God has a perfect plan for your life. Amen. Y'all heard me? God has a perfect plan for your life. I want you to stop right there and just meditate on that. Just think about it. God has a perfect plan for your life. And see, without conviction, you won't believe that. Conviction means I, I, I am sold on it. It comes by you reading the Bible, by you being around other strong Christians, by you praying, have pray, uh, uh, pr- prayer, having a prayer life, praise life, fellowship with God, fellowship with others. That's where conviction comes from. But God has a perfect plan for your life. Without flaw is his plan for your life. I know some of you have never heard that. He is. Yeah, he does. Listen, we're not going to believe in something imperfect. We won't use our faith for something that's imperfect. Let me show you the scriptures where, where I got that. Where you get that from, Pastor? I don't believe that. Let me, see. Let me show you. Romans 12, chapter, verses 1, 2, and 3. Listen to what it says. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you, give your bodies to God because all he has done for you, for all he has done for you, 
Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship. Don't copy, listen to this, don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for your life, which is what? Good and pleasing and what? And perfect. Oh, shuck a duck shuck a duck a duck there, brother. God's plan for my life is perfect. Yes, it is. Perfect for you. Tailor-made for you. You know why? Because he's perfect. He doesn't produce imperfection. So the, the plan he has for your life is perfect for you. How do I know how to do it? How do I know how to get to it, Pastor? Because, see, first of all, we're imperfect, so we think everything that comes into our life is imperfect. No, no, no. God's plan for your life is perfect. Paul said, uh-uh, uh-uh. And I'm going to show you throughout, I'm going to show you a couple people in the scriptures how God used their life and how God, when he incorporated them into what he was doing, the plan for them was perfect, just like he planned it. And your life can be the same. God has a perfect plan. And see, as Christians, we, we don't believe all this stuff. We don't believe it. If we really believe it, we, this church, would be, we would have to buy this whole place. We'd be, people would be busting their doors down. Say, man, you, gotta, you don't understand. God got a perfect, it's, it's tailor-made for you. He, had to plan, he planned it all for you. I'm going to show you in the scriptures. This is all throughout the scriptures. Yeah, he chose people, and he gave them a plan. It was perfect without error. Now, did they make errors? Absolutely. And I'm going to show you about all that in a minute, right? Y'all still here? Now, let me go to the scripture. Now, look, look at this scripture. It says, don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world. That's how you know. Th listen, that, that, that's how you mess up God's plan. When you start copycatting the world. And we see the world. We see this system operating. And then we think, oh, well, God is not doing nothing in my life. So I'm just going to do what they do. No. He says, don't let, let, let me prove it to you. Let me prove to you that my plan is perfect. How? Let me change how you think. If I can change how you think, I can prove to you that I'm working, that faith is working. But if we're copying the world, we're not going to believe that his plan is perfect for our life. If we're doing everything the world does. Uh, listen, I love that. It says, if we, if, we, if we don't copy the world, if we allow God to change how we think, listen, when God, when God changes how you think, then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good, pleasant, and perfect. <sighs> I got to stop copying the world. Then I'll know that perfect plan for me. Because most times people see God's plan for life and they think, one time I was talking to this guy, and, and we were talking about going overseas and doing mission trips. And he's like, oh, no, bro, I don't do that. I said, oh, okay, good, praise God. So he expected me to jump on him. and said, you've got to be a missionary. We're all got to do that thing. And he said to me later, he said, hey, hey, elder, he said, you know, I ain't trying to be, I've been trying to be coarse or nothing when I said that about going overseas and being a mission. I said, hey, man, if that's not God's plan for your life, there's no sweat. Don't sweat that. But find out what God's plan is and go do it. You'll be excited then. Yes. Now the missionaries, like my mother-in-law, we're going overseas. Yes. Yeah, let's go. If, you ain't that, if that's not God's plan for your life, you're not going to be that excited. Now you'll go and you'll do it because we're called to do it, right? But you, that, that, you're not going to go to live no three years in Russia. You'll be like, ooh, no. <laughs> that cold weather? Oh, no. Thank you. I'll send you a postcard. <laughs> but for her life, that was perfect. <sighs> Can you see? Are y'all getting this? It was perfect for what God was doing. So you got to understand that God's plan for your life is perfect. Perfect. Okay? Now, let's go to our next point. Did, did I miss something? Oh, without faith, is, it's impossible to know. You'll never know it without faith. You need faith in order for it to come to pass. Don't mean you have to be perfect. No one's saying that. I'm not saying that. God don't even expect you to be perfect. That's why he built in some stuff we're going to talk about. But his plan for you is without error. Oh, all right, number two. Y'all got me working hard this morning, boy. Whew. Mother at the beach, man. She, you know what I'm saying? My A-man corner at the beach, y'all. 
<laughs> we love you, mother. I know you're watching. Praise <laughs> All right, number two, number two, listen. God's plan includes a rerouting feature. Just in case, because you know, you know, my favorite app in the whole world, man, is Waze. <laughs> yeah. Listen, because we're going to mess up. We're going to get off. And God has to run. You ever, you ever been driving? Uh, see, I wave everywhere in Atlanta because, you know, you just never know what's going on. You can drive and think, oh, it's cool. I'm going to be there in five minutes. I'm saying, wham, you got four accidents in, in, five, in, three, in one mile. I was taking DJ to a basketball game. We up 575, I think. We driving. Whew, all of a sudden, waves is like, ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm thinking, oh, my Lord. Three accidents within one mile. I'm like, oh, come on, y'all. Get off your phones, people, please. But, you know, but just like that, we, listen, things happen. We get wrecked. We have to, the Spirit of God has to do what? He has to reroute us. Turn left. <laughs> Turn right. <laughs> Stay away from them. <laughs> Leave those people alone. <laughs> Go back to your mama. Shh. Live at your mama's house. Shh. I said, whoa. <laughs> no, because he knows we're going to make mistakes. Because, listen, we're zealous in our pursuit of our, God's plan for our life, aren't we? We want, yes, some of us now. Yes, some of us are ze zealous for life. We want to do it, yes. And we, get, we make big promises, and we do all those things, and then guess what? We mess up. We, we just like, oh, man, I messed up. And then we want to quit. We fornicate one time and we think, oh, God, God don't love me. I've ended the plan. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. I sinned. You sinned one time. You got pregnant one time. Or you got somebody pregnant one time. All of a sudden now you, oh, no, God ain't. No, no, no. His plan is perfect. It's perfect. You just need to be rerouted. Listen, let me show you something. This is Jesus talking to Peter. Again, remember, we just, we just read why he was, he, was, he was about to go to heaven, and he was telling them these things. And listen, he was talking to Peter because Peter was very, he was zealous. He's one of them guys that he spoke up all the time. He never shut up. You would tell Peter, shut up. You know, in, in class, you have these students that, you know, they always got to say something. The class is about over. The, the teacher done gave the assignment. Everybody can get it done. And they want to raise their hands. What about all this other stuff? Shut up. <laughs> that was Peter, man. Peter was... So listen, so Jesus is talking to him. It's in Luke, the 22nd chapter. It's in, 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 uh, Jesus tells Simon, he says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift each of you like wheat. But I have pleaded in prayer for you, Simon, that your faith should not fail. So when you have repented and turned to me again, strengthen your brothers. Peter said, Lord, now listen to Peter. Lord, I am ready to go to prison with you. Even die with you. Jesus said, okay, homie, Peter, let me just tell you something. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, in other words, before the clock strikes 6 o'clock and go bing, 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 listen, you will have denied me three times that you even know me. You see that? So listen, it's going to happen in the plan of God. You're going to be in the plan of God, and you're going to say, man, I ain't doing that Christian thing no more. I don't want to go to church. I don't want to do none of that. I don't stand them people that get on my nerve. They fake. Spirit of God says, oh, no, let me just reroute you. <laughs> Why? To get you back on the plan. Every little obstacle, you want to quit. Every little thing happens. Oh, what do you do? Oh, do you do? We ready to blame people. Yeah. Jesus told Peter, he said, Peter, listen, it's important that your faith don't fail. He said, I pray. Again, the angel shut Zachariah's mouth so he couldn't talk. Here comes Jesus, tells Peter, I, I pray for your faith, that your faith won't fail. So I think Jesus is still praying for our faith, that our faith don't fail. Because again, remember, his plan is what? His plan is what? His plan is what? It's perfect for your life. Don't mess it up. All you need to do is participate with your faith. That's all you got to do is believe and act on what you believe. Y'all still here with me? So people ask me, me and Leslie this all the time. We get this question. How did y'all make it to be, how many years? 27 now, right, baby? 27? Going on 28? We like to say that. Going on 28, you know what I'm saying? 27. People ask me all the time, say, say um, how, how do y'all stay so, so happy, happily married? Or what do y'all do to have so much fun? We, we just stay within the plan. We stay on course with the plan. Plans say love each other, we do. Plans say forgive, we do. Plan say don't go to bed mad. That's what we do. We stay within the plan. 
So we haven't been have to reroute, be rerouted a lot. Why? Because we stay within the plan. And if you stay within God's plan, by his word, now his word is the plan to help us, right? If you stay within it, you don't have to worry about all the extra side. Yeah, you know, you got to get off and you got to get back on. No, no, no. We work the plan. If you work the plan, you have to worry about all the other stuff. Unless it makes me mad, I go to Leslie, honey. You made me mad all the time. And all the time, you make me mad. <laughs> right? But I don't stay mad all the time. All the time. I don't. No, we talk. We have a conversation. We don't let any obstacle just get us off course. Anybody to get us off? No. And then we know who's supposed to be in our lives and who don't. Everybody's not going to be in your life. You're not going to have everybody as a buddy buddy in your life. It ain't going to happen. I ain't got time, man. That's another subject. I got to go. Come on, y'all. Stop saying amen right there, praise All right, next point. Listen, you must believe that you were born for a specific purpose. Now, it's easier for us, and this, listen to this, it is easier for us to see it in other people's lives than not see it in our own lives. Ain't that something? It's easier for me to say, Freddie, man, Freddie up here singing, promise, he, he just playing and singing, he's anointed to do it. I'm thinking, whoo, that's that boy's purpose. Go, boy, go, hey, yes. And it's good, it's easy for me to see it, but it's not easy for me to see it in my own life. Did you know that Jesus talked about his purpose all the time? He talked about the great plan God has for his life. He talked about, oh, I'm, I'm here, Luke 4.18, one of the most famous scriptures in the Bible. He stood up in church, in temple, in the middle of testimony service. And he said, the spirit of God is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to set the captives free. What? What's he talking about? The God's plan. When was the last time you had a good conversation about God's plan for your life? Come on, man. Let's, let's read. We're, we're, this is Acts 9, chapter 15, verse. This is, this is, this is not, we're going to another person. This is Saul. Y'all know who Saul is, but he was Paul later. He wrote most of the Bible, most of the New Testament, I should say. Right? But he was in the same boat me and you were. He thought he was doing the will of God. Killing folk. Beating folk up. Dragging them out the church. Kicking them. Get, told you about that worship in Jesus. Throw them in jail. Now listen. Again, God's plan for your life is perfect. Listen to what when Jesus hit, hit Paul. Now, this conversation actually is between Ananias, who was a, one of God's servants, who God told him, go get Paul. Go get him. Listen to the conversation. But the Lord said, go, for Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles and to kings as well as to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. Y'all see that? Listen, what did, God, what, did, what did Jesus just tell Ananias? He told Ananias, hey, go get, go get Paul. Here's what I got planned for him. He's going to be an instrument to take my message to the Gentiles. He's going to talk to kings. Oh, my God. Do you believe that? Listen, the same principle applies for us. You have to believe you were born for a specific purpose. Why am I born? Why am I here? Just stay close to God. He'll make sure you know it. He'll make sure you know why you're here. Paul, man, Paul, listen, Paul served, he served Jesus so well. He, he, at one point in his life, he said, listen, I, I, this is so wonderful. And, and I mind you, he got beat up and mugged and his shipwrecked. I mean, it, was, it wasn't good. If you listen to his testimony, he was in prison most of the time. Most of the time, he was in prison. And Paul still said, Phew, man, this faith thing, we got to live by faith. <laughs> Why does he say that? Because he knew for God's plan to take place in your life, it takes faith. You have to do something. But you got to believe that you're here for a specific purpose. See, again, this is higher thinking. This is higher thinking living, if that makes sense. This is higher thinking living. The spirit of fear in this culture is not going to teach you that. Only faith will teach you this is higher level thinking. What? Yes, you are born for a specific purpose. It's proof. All throughout the Bible, Abraham, what would he be? The father of? Y'all got it. Y'all got it. You see that? David, he told David, David will be the king of, over Israel. Jeremiah, Nehemiah, he was born to do what? To rebuild that wall. Restore the glory of God. All throughout the scripture, Joseph, 
He was born. Now, Joseph was crazy because his life, was, it, it didn't look like it. None of it looked like it, that his pain was perfect, but it was perfect. Yeah. And God, now listen, how things work, and I don't want to get ahead of myself, but how things work, God uses the good and the bad in your life to make the plan come to pass. But he's not up there saying, oh, oh, that happened, oh, oh well, no, so much, I'm sorry, but that ain't going to work. Yeah, yeah, up in the, write a new plan. No, no, no. He says, oh, that's okay, good, give me that, I know how to use it. Put it here. That happened to you, up, oh, up, oh, that's okay, put it right here. You just keep walking. I got rejected by these people. Okay, good, give me that, I'll take it, put it right here. You see that? He's telling Ananias, hey, go get Paul, I got a, I got a specific assignment for him. The same thing about you. You have an assignment from God. It's going to take faith for you to do it. If it ain't, listen, I can tell you this. If it don't take faith, it ain't from God. I can tell you that by my own experience. If it's easy, it's not from God. <laughs> no, no, because listen, again, these two, these two cultures are battling in the, over our lives. This culture is not going to allow it to be easy. You ever, wanna, you ever go to a, a, a football game or a basketball game and it's a blowout? You get mad because you spent all that money. Paid $30 to part. <laughs> you say, you know, I want my team to win, but at least make it fun. I mean, at least make it, give it, give it a good fight. Yeah. That's the same thing about our lives, man. It's a fight. But the plan is perfect for your life. Amen. All right, come on, our last point, we're going to be done. Oh, I, I, did I have, okay, we're on the last point. Yes, yes, okay, number, number, number four, we're, we'll be done. Your faith needs God's words and other people's counsel. Yeah, you, you're going to need the word of God because it's not going to be easy. You're going to need the word of God, but you're going to need other people's counsel. Other people, listen to this, other people who knows God's plan for their life and have been walking in it. You're going to need their counsel. And the spirit of God will guide you to them. Like my uncle, I told you about Uncle Henry Polite. He's he in the drink, he's smoking a big cigarette. <sighs> Reading the newspaper. I said, Unc, what am I supposed to do? He put the cigarette down. What? 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 You go in that Air Force. He didn't know that he was aiding me into the plan of God for my life. He didn't know. I didn't either. Till now, I look back and all the years of training I had there, serving God's house. You see? Because we need guidance. And we need counsel of other people. Let me show you something. Now, Moses, y'all know who Moses is, right? Moses was a superstar. Moses was a superstar, just in case y'all know. Moses, it, was, it was like LeBron. Y'all always were comparing LeBron and Michael, you know. Who is the best? Well, Moses is one of them dudes, man. Moses is on the top of the list, bro. You know what I'm saying? Moses was <laughs> Kobe. Who said Kobe? You know, Kobe. I hate Kobe anyway. Praise the Lord. <laughs> in a good hate. You know, good hate. <laughs> I don't hate him the person. I just hate he beat my spurs all the time. That's why I hate Kobe, please don't mention Kobe again <laughs> in this church. <laughs> Isaiah, I'll put you out. All right, so listen, Exodus, 18 chapter. It says the next day. Now Moses, now Moses had led the children of Israel out of y'all got to hear this, out of Egypt. They're now on the other side of the Red Sea, and Moses is. The people got problems. They complaining. It's hot. They got cool, they, their AC working, ours not working. <laughs> Moses said, can you just open your window and get them some AC? No! So the next day, the Bible says, Moses sat as usual to hear the people's complaint against each other. Listen to this. From morning to evening. How stupid was that? <laughs> can you imagine? All day long, that's all he did. His, 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 his godly father-in-law shows up and says verse 17 Moses it's not right his father-in-law exclaimed you're going to wear yourself out if you do if you do what will happen to the people he told Moses hey Moses if you don't stop this the people what's going to happen when you kill yourself you're going to wear yourself out Moses this job is too heavy a burden for you to try to handle all by yourself now listen let me give you a word of advice and God will bless you but these people's, these, but these people's lawyer, they're represented before God. So in other words, he's telling Moses, Moses, you represent the people before God. Stop listening to all these complaints. 
he later would tell them, get you some leaders, put one man over 10, this man over 10, this man over 10, and let them listen to their problems. And then and if there's the bigger issue they can't set, they settle, they bring to you. But what he told Moses, Moses, all, I, all you need to do is talk to God for these people. That was great counsel. You see that? So listen to me carefully. The plan of God for your life takes counsel. And God will direct you to the right people to give you right counseling. Why? Because this thing is not going to be easy. It's not, man. And I'm telling you this. Guidance is not an individual activity. Guidance is not an individual activity. We all need it. But the best guidance I've ever gotten is the guidance I got every Sunday morning. And amidst God's people in community. That's the best guidance I ever got. But it's not, it's not individual. You, you know, what I mean by that, uh, you just can't do it by yourself. You need to go talk to somebody. There's times we need to go talk to somebody. Because this way won't be easy. I got a story to tell you. I'm going to be done. Did y'all get something out of that? Well, let me tell you this story. Don't go nowhere. Hold on. I got, a, I got a phone call the other day from my godson. We were talking. And, and y'all know him. He's the, uh, he's the, uh, he's the, he got a new title. He's the head of scouting and player development for the New Orleans Pelicans. So I get this phone call for him. Now, mind you, when he was in college, he got recruited at Texas A&M. He was at Texas A&M. He was an Aggie. Whoop, whoop. Y'all don't know that. Anyway. So listen, his, his sophomore year, he tore his ACL. Yeah. But all his life, since he was five years old, we say, Bryce, Bryson. Where you going, man? What you going to do? I'm going to the NBA, uncle. I'm going to play in the NBA. All right. So he was playing. He, he was practicing, training. He was going to the NBA. One year later after he tore it, on the same day that he tore the first time, he tore it again. And again, I was telling someone this week, it was like when we went to the house, it was like somebody died. We walked in. Because his dream looked like he was dead. The plan of God for his life, it was over. It's just, it was no way that was going to take place. No way. No way it was going to take place. All he'd been saying all his life, I'm going to the NBA. I'm going to the NBA. Playing on the court. He, they, would even, they wouldn't even play him. Even his senior year when he, re, when he recovered, he was a senior. Senior day. Listen, senior day at, his, at, the, at the game, right? 34 seconds left to go, they put him in. Just completely. These coaches, I'm telling you, they, they, they're a little ruthless. He, he, they cutthroat. They, they wouldn't even play the boy. He, he was humble. He, he went in the game, grabbed the ball, they blew the whistle, he threw it. Just, just disgraceful. So anyway, he called me the other day. His, his brother called me and said, hey, hey, man, and we were talking. He said, hey, ha- have you heard? I said, what? He said, you know, A&M got a new facility, basketball facility. Said, yeah. He said, when you open the door, the first picture you see on the wall is Bryson Graham. General, uh, assist, uh, what is it? Sports director. Well, he's the director of sports, player development, all that stuff. And it says on the fast track to be a general manager in the NBA. Wow. How does that happen? Because God's plan for your life is perfect. It's without error. It's without error. So here he is now. The same coaches that wouldn't play him is calling him. <laughs> the same coaches that said, I oh, don't put him in. No, 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 no. They calling him saying, hey, Bryson, can y'all come? I got a player that I need you to come see. I made some promises to him when I recruited him. Can you come see? What? Why? Because God's plan for your life. It's perfect. So players who were snobbing him, laughing at him, not calling him, hey, man, they can get me a tryout. They can get me a tryout. You know who you know, who you know, who you know with this other team. How does that happen? Listen, you got to believe. He's just one of others to have happened. I was talking to Brother Gilbert. I ain't got time. I got to stop. But I was talking to Brother Gilbert this week. And he had a job somewhere, and the guy didn't like him. And, you know, it was a long story. And, and they fired him. They let him go. And then he, he, uh, he told me, he said, and it was just another job that came up. It was a, I think it was for the government or something. It was a very good job, tailor-made for him all, as far as his, his experience. And he said uh, he, had, he was in Chicago, he, and they wanted to interview him at a certain time. 
And he said, and, and he was talking to the recruiter. This rec national recruiter was, was talking to him, kind of mediating. And he, and he told the recruiter, he said, listen, make it at, at, th at 2, 15, because I won't be able to get there. Or, or just in case I have a delay in my flight. And the guy said, well, they made all these other changes for you. I'm not quite sure they're going to do that, but I'll ask them. So they made it at 1. Of course, him flying from Chicago, guess what he got? He had a delay. He got his flight got sent to somewhere else. And so he said by the time he got back to his hometown, it's 3 o'clock. He ain't heard from them people because he never had their number. He was only dealing with the, with the uh, recruiter. So he said he gets in the car. He told he called his wife, baby, you know, here's what happened. We were looking for it for this interview, yada, yada, yada. He said, I don't know. I don't know, babe. 30 seconds later, he gets a phone call. It's the company that's trying to, that, that was recruiting him. The guy, never, the, guy that, the guy that never spoken to him, nothing. He didn't even have his phone number. And so he said, he said, hey, man, he said, hey, yeah, he introduced himself. He said, well, uh, we just wondering how you're doing on time. He said, well, I just landed. I had, you know, some flight problems. He said, that's okay. Can you get here in an hour? He said, yeah, I'll be in an hour. He said, he said uh, Gilbert asked him, how did you get my phone number? He said, man, I don't know. They, he, gave, he never gave me your phone number. I just started looking on Facebook and everything until I found your number. So when he walked through the door and sat down, 10 minutes later, they said, this is your office. This is how much you're going to make. This is what you're going to be doing. God's plan for your life. It's perfect. Perfect. You just have to learn how to use your faith to walk in it. Stand to your feet. Let's pray. Father, we love you.